Okay, my outstanding friends, it's Roger once again, and we are going to be just continuing to go through the debate in absentia series. Now, today I am debating Lawrence Krauss about the weakness of the human mind. Okay, my outstanding, wonderful friends, it's Roger once again, going to talk about academia. And what is academia? They're, well, that's the old the intelligentsia. They're all, they know everything. Well, guess what? They don't know anything, literally anything. And it's become a denialist system now so that they can stay in power and still not know anything by saying, this isn't right, that's not right. We have peer review people that say, that's not right. We're not going to listen to that. And that is exactly what's happened to science. And that's what's happened to me. It happened to everybody that's presented factual stuff. And I'm going to be kind of, kind of uh, critical today, very critical, as a matter of fact. And let me start right now. All right. So here's this guy Krauss, uh, Lawrence Krauss. He's talking about how they can push back against everything with science. They can prove anything is wrong. What doesn't satisfy the test of experiment, we throw out. What remains may not be true. But we shrink it down, as Sherlock Holmes would say, and what remains after all of that is done is likely to be true. So many sources question what you see and, and whether it's consistent with what you already know, and be suspicious of your own likes and dislikes when you accept information. That's probably the reason we shouldn't, when we turn to the Internet, go to echo chambers and just read the sources that we like. Exactly. That's that's fine. But he's talking about don't come go don't go looking at Roger's stuff because all, all those people are all crazy and they're just echoing what he says. No. I show evidence, my good friend, Mr. Krauss, and if you want to confront me and debate me, I would love that. I have tried to contact every single one of you people, and not one single one stands up because I I destroy you. I literally destroy the things that you say with evidence, not with the kind of stuff that you mumbo jumbo you guys got. Okay, this is going to be Lawrence Krauss. I'm just going to allow him to say his statements about what makes a person intelligent and what how they should think and react to new information and so forth. Here it goes. Lawrence Krauss. I'd like to keep an open mind but not so open that my brains fall out. And that's the key point. We, can't, we, we have to skeptically assess the information we receive. We can't be gullible because there, when we get a lot of information, it's absolutely certain that some of that information is wrong. And so we have to always filter what we get. And we have to ask ourselves the following question. How open does my brain have to be to accept that information? Does it have to fall out? And, and by that I mean, when someone tells you something, you have to ask, is this consistent with my experience? Is it consistent with the experience of other people around me? Before he continues, I just want you to think about it in this context. He's telling you right now, don't think for yourself. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. When you read into the words of this, you'll see, don't think for yourself. Listen to what other people say. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. It's just hilarious, really. Well, listen. Experience. Is it consistent with the experience of other people around me? And if it isn't, then probably there's a, there's a good reason to be skeptical about it. It's probably wrong. If it makes predictions that also appear to be in disagreement with things that you observe around you. you now, observe around you, yes, but they won't observe. They refuse to observe because they have been told, you shouldn't listen to these people, they're all crazy. And they, and they accept that, and they just say, oh, yeah, all you people are all crazy, we're not even going to listen to you. You should, be, you should question it. And so, we should never <coughs> take anything on faith. That's really the mantra of science, if you want. Exactly right, Lawrence. Exactly correct. When I have something that I can present that's physical, like this goose head, with his feathers still intact, that had transitioned into a mud fossil by a process fully understood now by me, nucleophilic substitution, which is the invasion of 
of molecules that are in a state of instability attaching to them creating stability when they dried out you end up with this and then bones do the same thing now this is not accepted by science and is refused to be examined by people that feel they have the full understanding of knowledge ahead of time and listen to everybody else around them and refuse to engage with anyone that presents evidence that does not conform to their friends that faith is the enemy of science. We often talk about a loss, loss of faith in the world today. I, I, you don't lose anything by losing faith. Okay, What you gain is reality. And so skepticism plays a key role in science simply because we also are hardwired to want to believe. We're hardwired to want to find reasons for things. In the, ancient, in the savannah in Africa, the trees could be rustling. And you could choose to say, well, there's no reason for that, or maybe it's due to a lion. And those individuals who thought there might be no reason never lived long enough to survive, to, to procreate. And so it's not too surprising. We want to find explanations for everything, and we create them if we need to, to satisfy ourselves. Because Exactly. That's, they've created all these nonsensical explanations for things so that they can walk around in a circle, fill their pockets with our money, to tell, to, to, to tell us to just be quiet and don't listen to anybody that has solutions. And this is what's happened to, to academia. It's become a denialist system. It's not become, let's look for answers. It's, it's let's destroy people that have the answers so that we continue to, to fill our pockets with their, their money. Let's work against them so that we can work in our own interests as academics. We, we need to have this funding continuing and if we come up with answers we're in trouble and I have the answers and we all have the answers and we, we are now a slave society to academia I'm sorry it's just a fact we now are slaves and the ones that go to these places to get that piece of paper that says now you're a journeyman slave they pay to become a slave a lot of money to some of these places and then they are intimidated to say exactly what they tell them to say or they won't be allowed to participate using that piece of paper. They say that guy's crazy, he, didn't, he failed. He failed. Why did he fail? Because he didn't put up with the nonsense that we're feeding him. He wouldn't eat it. Because we need to make sense of the world around us and what we have to understand is that what makes sense to the universe is not the same as what makes sense to us and we can't impose our beliefs on the universe. And the way we get around that inherent bias is by constantly questioning both ourselves and all the information we receive from others. That does not happen in academia. It absolutely, I'm telling you right now, I have worked with academia my entire life. And in the last 10 years, I have been so entwined with the academic denial system that it is, it's, um, I never could possibly have, have believed how against reality the top universities, I'm talking about the top universities, Yale, Harvard, all of them, every single one of them, against the presentation of factual reality, against it, denial, uh, literally against it. Now that is a fiduciary failure. They're supposed to be working in the interest of the students, and that is not what's happening. I absolutely guarantee you of that. And there's no reason whatsoever that somebody shouldn't be able to put in a class action lawsuit and say, you people are not paying attention to facts and reality and truth. Roger's been trying to present this stuff for 10 years. You won't allow it to be seen. Nobody else can step up because I don't care. I don't have a job. I don't have to worry about their paying me every week. And I don't have to worry about being thrown out of my job because I've started trouble with people. And that's what all of these academics and all of the people that are in the intelligentsia are literally herd mentality animals now. If you go outside the herd and you're standing out there saying, hey, whoa, 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 you guys are eating the wrong stuff. You're doing the wrong thing here. No, no, you better stay away because they'll, they'll kill you. They'll, they'll tear you to shreds. That's what we do in science, and it yeah. works beautifully in the real world as well. The problem is this. None of us has the truth. See, this is where it goes. It, 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 now, this, he's going to end up saying about religion and who can possibly talk about God. Let's see about this other guy, Krauss. Hold on. 
All right, this is Lawrence Krauss again. He's going to say science can't, can't say anything definite about anything. He's, they don't know anything correct now. I'm, I'm telling you, they don't know gravity, they don't know what light is, they don't know what the vacuum of space is, which is not a vacuum. They really don't know anything about anything. Every time you hear anything in science now, it's totally unexpected. Oh, caught by total surprise. Nobody ever expected this. And that's the reason is because everything is a denialist system now. So they, they, they're trying to force against understanding, not to try to help understand, to try to force against it, to say, no, no, you can't possibly understand that because we're scientists and we don't understand it. Well, they don't understand anything because they won't look at anything. Science doesn't prove what's absolutely true. What it does is prove what's absolutely false. They spend trillions of dollars at Fermilab trying to prove me wrong. And I'm telling you, that's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to prove me wrong. Because I can show exactly the particles that they wanted to find and cannot find. It's me they're trying to prove wrong. And if Don Lincoln wants to confront me, Roger Spur, I want to confront him, Don Lincoln, from Fermi Lab. I'm not allowed in that realm right now. I've been blocked. And I've been told that I will not, they will not spend one minute to look at anything I have to present because I am not peer-reviewed. That is a disgrace. Okay, I mentioned Don Link in a Fermi lab, and I thought he was going to work with me, but he just turned against me as soon as I presented evidence that really blew him out of the water. This is light. Light is basically the smartest, smallest particle that exists. We accelerate it. They don't allow for that in their theories of light accelerating, which it obviously did. And Don Lincoln doesn't think it's a particle, as far as I know. I think he thinks it's some kind of non-existent wave of who knows what. But it's obviously a particle. It's a 2P2H particle. Um, Cornell had seen these and seen them create these ex excessive, gigantic amounts of energy and said it's urgent that we look into this. Well, I tried to present this to Don Lincoln and he just blocked me. He said, no, we're not going to listen to you because you're not peer-reviewed. And, and uh, not, not only this, I have exactly identical to what they're looking for. How could you possibly block me because I'm not peer-reviewed? There's a muon and an electron neutrino. Those are the black and a white ball. They separate here. This is fission. That's fusion. This is nuclear power on a desktop. The, the concussive value is astronomical. It's, you, it's, you can't even see it back here until it starts to concuss. And then it is like a, an atomic explosion, which is exactly what it is. Fission, fusion. Free energy. We could harvest this within weeks. And I am blocked from... Our government websites, or our government sites that are supposed to be trying to help us, <laughs> I see exactly the opposite. Okay, these are DNA reports from three samples I extracted from s gigantic creatures that are here on my property. Sent them off, the lab reports came back that they were excellent quality DNA samples because I took them directly from the arterial blood and they came back all human DNA uh, here it is right here it says uh, excellent quality DNA sequence was obtained from the 36 inch tip and the lung sample and his, this is what they are homo sapien this was a um, a certified test from certified lab it was done in uh, two different labs and um, this, they, they found just exactly what I'm showing. This is the evidence. And um, this was six years ago. And it's not allowed anywhere. I'll show you the samples. It's not allowed. Yale refuses to engage. Harvard refuses to engage. Johns Hopkins refuses to engage. Everybody, 100%. All the people making the statements refuse to back up their statements because they're wrong. This is a fingertip on my property. That's the fingernail. That's the little bumper pad that bumps up to the next bone as it goes forward. Now, not only is the fingertip on the nail side perfect, the grip skin side where you have your fingerprints are perfect too. That is literally one fingerprint ridge, just like you have on your fingers. My thumb is a little somewhere around the same width as that fingerprint ridge. This popped right off of there because it's exactly what they show here. It's a very dense, thick portion of skin. And that there's the sweat pores. I mean, you know, it's quite obvious. And the, the DNA was excellent. And this is um, another one I had tested here. 
there's another giant and that's the palm if you take your left palm and you put it out just like that you're going to see this little ridge run you know it's a, a tendon and this is the bumper pad that runs around and it surrounds this little cavity area and that is the grip skin here it's on your palms of your hands, your fingertips, your feet, your toes, and it is, it's, it's what meets the surface of the, everything that you touch and grip and rub against. and It's tough. And I believe this has got some materials in here. I'd like to see if there's iridium in these things. I didn't do any real heavy-duty chemical analysis other than the DNA. I had CAT scans, I had DNA. The CAT scans I had on pieces like the, the fingertips. I have fingertips here and knuckles and all kinds of, cause, you know, the whole thing is there. It's just, you know, in pieces. Uh, and this is what happened to them. They came apart due to a, a process called nucleophilic substitution. And what happens is the bones, everything gets invaded by, every, you know, that's why there's no bone bone here, or white bones they look for. Oh, there's no bones, there's nothing there. Yes, there is. That's everything. That's the cartilage. That's Everything that was there, where or the tendon ethnicis were here, every single bit, the tunica, the um, epidermis, uh, they call it epidermis, I can't figure it out. No, uh, anyway, it's the, the wrapping of the bone, which is a membrane, a fabric. I have so much of this stuff, and some of it is literally like meat that came out of freezer. I cooked that, but I, my teeth aren't as good as they used to be. Now, Goose. My buddy here. Caesar. That's a goose. You see the feathers? The neck, if you knew how to look at it, you could see that there's a difference to the neck where things were, but you you wouldn't be able to tell that just by looking at it. Nobody's going, oh, it's just a, it's just a rock. No, it isn't. That's a goose's head, and this is the feathers, and the feathers are made of collagen. The same thing that it coats every fabric and organ in your body, your skin, all that is collagen. And that is what separates all of these things when they came out of this great flood. And it had to be a long duration saltwater flood. And I think it might have been a lot of hot water because Velikovsky claims that the earth was wrenched when this occurred, it happened. All these giants were drowned and all that stuff. And it all, there's every, every history records this Everywhere, every culture has the exact same story. And Velikovsky went and got all these information. They destroyed him. This is what I mean. These guys, like these people that I'm, I'm interviewing, I'm debating, and they won't could debate me. They won't stand up. They're, they're afraid to stand up. There's no way they can stand up to me. None. Zero. That's why you won't ever hear from them. They will hide from me. Because I have the evidence. They have no evidence. The, all they have is statements they made. Now they're, they're saying, oh boy, I'm really, really, really in trouble. Just shut up. Don't say a word. Just, just, just leave, let, let that guy just scream in the woods. Nobody will listen to him. He's crazy. No, I got all the evidence, my friends. Sooner or later, your day is over. So my point is, I'm not just out after academia because I'm just a nasty guy. I'm out after academia because they're not doing their job. They're turning against truth to protect their status and you know because he's he, this guy's a pretty top guy i went to all the top guys i went to every top university i went to the university of geneva i took courses there i took course at um johns hopkins rice university about everywhere yale i've even taken courses there now, you know they have them online you can go take these courses and um you don't have to pay a thing for them but they don't give you a piece of paper so if you don't have that piece of paper, they say, oh, wait, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. He was just an idiot watching the, watching the screen. No, I know what I'm doing. Those idiots are the ones that are putting stuff on the screen they have no clue about, and they refuse to engage in valid scientific evidence, which is their duty, especially their duty to the students. This is a fiduciary failure that, should, that cannot stand. It's got to change. And Derek Briggs forced my hand to become this way. I, all I wanted to do was put it on academia. Look into this stuff. It's you guys' job. Do it. Refused. Absolutely refused. That's what sent me on this mission. And I will not turn around.